was 17 I ran away from home and from everything I had ever known I was sick and tired Living in a town filled with narrow minds and hay Hello, hello, hello And thank you so much for tuning in to A Spoonful of Comfort I am Claudine Jackson. I am your host for A Spoonful of Comfort. It is my honor and my pleasure to be able to speak to you every Tuesday. And I really appreciate the privilege of your time, especially during these perilous times that we're going through. When I decided uh, the show would be A Spoonful of Comfort, it's because I write a blog called A Spoonful of Comfort. But Lord knows we need way more than A Spoonful of Comfort now. We need a whole waterfall of comfort. Whoever would have thought that our country would end up the way that it is now? Well, we're not at our final destination, but our, and I, I try to stay out of politics, but our let's pretend I'm a president person said he was going to make us number one, and he has made us the number one undesirable country. You know, I've done a lot of traveling, and thank goodness that I have done a lot of traveling. But uh, the United States is the country now that's banned from traveling to other countries. So um, I'm thankful that I did the traveling that I did. I'm the one that said that a pandemic such as we're going through, I'm the one that said, well, it has happened in previous times, but it won't happen now because we, we got the medical science advances. We've got the doctors who have studied. We've got the scientists. Oh, I just really had no uh, belief that what is happening would happen. But we are going to get through it. It, it came to pass. I thought it would be over. It, you know, in the Bible it says, and it came to pass. So this came to pass. It didn't come to stay. So we have to get through it, and we will get through it. And I try to share with you things that comfort me to help me get through things. My, um, I talk about I try to stay out of politics, but I do have a grandson, DeLorean Holmes, who uh, was one of the people running for state representative in District 4. Well, he did not win but out of uh, 14 candidates he was in the top five so I don't know if he's through with politics or if he's going to run again but I was very proud of him he's the de uh, deputy director at the Detroit Port Authority right down there on the river so uh, he he would have lost part of his income if he had become a state representative. So I'm very proud of him, DeLorean Holmes. I have another grandson who is a naval special ops uh, person. He was in the Navy for 10 years and he was part of their special operations team. So I, I've told you my age before and how ancient I am. I have four children, nine grandchildren, three great grands, and I'm just thankful that I'm blessed to uh, still be able to function, still be able to speak to you, still be able to uh, join you on Tuesdays. I want to share a poem with you. You know, I started this because of, of my uh, book. The, this is my fourth book. My book, The Butterfly. I have a book inspired by autism. Uh, a Spoonful of Comfort is on the Internet. And uh, my first book was called Let There Be Light, books of poems. Uh, Inspired by Autism was a story of me raising my son who was handicapped by autism. Now, I had mentioned that uh, one of the other reasons was to raise money for the Purvis Jackson Foundation, to sell books and to raise money for the Purvis Jackson Foundation. So because of the pandemic, I have not been able to do that much this year. So uh, don't know how 
we will uh, be able to help people toward the end of the year. We may be able to help people more, but we got to keep the faith. Uh, I forget which, which scripture it is. You will know. Above all, take faith as your shield, for it will quench every burning missile that the enemy throws at you. And you know, we've been getting burning missile after burning missile uh, these past few months. But we have to keep the faith. Um, there's a song called Keep the Faith. I forget who's singing it, but he says, we're in the master's hand and the master has a plan, so hold on and keep the faith. I want to share with you a poem that I did not write. This was um, in one of the guidepost publications, and it's called God Is. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God walks beside me, guides my way through every moment of the day. God is my health. I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing, quick. God is my all. I know no fear, since God and love and truth are here. I now am wise. I now am true, faithful, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ, the truth that is in me. And I said I did not write that poem, and I can't promise you that I live up to everything in the poem, but God wants us to aspire. He doesn't expect us to be perfect. If we aspire to do better and to be a good person, he's happy. So uh, God is. That's one of the things that sees me through, especially the line, God is my health. I can't be sick. Um, I am a, a, a deacon at New Mount Vernon Missionary Baptist Church, but uh, church was closed for, uh, you know how long church was closed, so it just opened up the past two weeks. I have not attended because I am part of the high-risk group, and they say uh, for us high-risk people to stay home. I'm talking about because of my age and pre-existing conditions, and you're seeing me without a mask, but when I'm out and about, I wear a mask because we're trying to protect you and me. What is going on in the world is uh, beyond our control. So we have to control what we have control over. Uh, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, one of my favorite authors who wrote the book, The Power of Positive Thinking, Dr. Peale says that whatever happens to you is not as important as your attitude toward what happens to you. He says the attitude about it is more important than the actual facts of it. And I didn't know uh, if that would work, but it helped me deal with my son's autism. When I thought I couldn't survive his autism and I thought that uh, I was going to get him cured and things didn't work out the way that I wanted them to. I couldn't change the situation, although I spent a lot of time trying to change the situation. So I had to change my attitude about the situ situation. Now, my son still has autism. He's 45 years old now. He still can't read or write or talk or live independently. And I thought that our life would be over if I could not get him normal by the time he was an adult. Well, when it, sometimes God doesn't answer our prayer the way we ask. Prayed for God to move this mountain. God did not move the mountain, but he moved me. I prayed for God to cure my son. He did not cure my son, but he cured me. So sometimes God answers our prayers in an unexpected way, a way that we didn't expect. But... Um, if we just hold on and keep the faith in God, he will bring us through. I tell you, he has pulled me through a lot. We're, we're um, in this situation, and one of the uh, reporters that I heard say, we're all in the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat. 
as you have seen with the inequality and the protesters and the things that's going on, things that I never would have predicted for the United States of America. But Ecclesiastes 9 and 2 says, All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the clean and the unclean. Now, seeing wicked people in control of the country is something I never would have predicted either because uh, I thought we had all our checks and balances and democracy works and now we're in danger of losing our democracy so please vote. I was telling you about my grandson uh, running for office so please vote. We, it's very important that we vote and the powers that be, the let's pretend I'm a president person, he's trying to even mess that up. But uh, we have to do what we had to fight to do. You know, black people, we weren't always allowed to vote. We had to fight for the right to vote. So I hope you will get out there and vote. Um, Matthew 5 and 45 says, He maketh the sun to shine on the evil and the good, and he sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Ecclesiastes 9 and 2, all things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and the wicked, to the clean and the unclean. Now, uh, those of us who are Christians and who believe in the power of, of the Lord, we have something to help see us through this pandemic. People who don't believe in God, I don't know how... Uh, how they're making it through. Um, Ecclesiastes 3 and 15 says, That which has been is now, and that which is to be has already been. And God requires that which is past. Well, I knew that this pandemic was predicted and all that, but I still thought medical science and everything, it wouldn't be as bad as it has been. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9 says, We are troubled on every side, but not depressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. We are troubled, but not depressed. I can't say that I, I have always not been depressed. I've, I've been depressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Now, uh, Romans uh, 8 and 18 says, The suffering of the present day are not worthy to be compared to the glory which will be revealed in us. I am not one of the ones who is suffering, and I am thankful for that. I hope you are not one of the ones who is suffering. So some of us, those of us who aren't suffering, we should be able to give comfort to the ones that are suffering. You know, uh, I talk about how to treat people, and one of the uh, suggestions about how to treat people is bear ye one another's burdens. So if you can't bear someone's burdens, if you can't give them comfort, at least don't add to their burdens. At least don't add to their discomfort. Um, Psalm... Psalm... Uh, 42 and 5 says, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Well, we know why our soul is downcast when it is downcast. We know why it is so disturbed. But it also says, Put your hope in God, for I will yet trust in him. Put your hope in God, for I will yet trust in him. And sometimes it's hard to keep the faith. But if you know the outcome, you don't need faith. That's what faith means. It's the evidence of things not seen. Belief that things will get better. Um, Romans 8, 24 and 25 says we are saved by hope. But hope seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why do you have to hope for it? But if you hope for that that you seeth not, then you do with patience wait for it. I can't say I've always waited with patience. Um, but God knows our flaws, and he understands, just like we know our children's flaws. Psalm 138 and 7, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thy right hand delivereth me. And, and uh, Deuteronomy 31 and 8 says, The Lord goeth before me. 
Psalm 61 and 2 says, From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. And I know there are times when you felt like it was from the end of the earth, but felt like we are at the end of the earth. But all the scriptures that I'm sharing with you about what's going on now were written 2,700 years ago. And they're still relevant. That's why the Bible is such an important book. The scriptures were written 2,700 years ago. So I'm going to take a short break. Please stay with me for more of a spoonful of comfort. And please remember, if you can't give comfort, don't give discomfort. Sick and tired, living in a town filled with narrow minds. Thank you so much for sticking with me for a spoonful of comfort. I hope that you are one of the ones who are not suffering too much through this pandemic. And if you've lost someone, if you're one of the ones that uh, have, have been through a real crisis during this pandemic, remember, Christ is there for us when we're in a crisis. You got to take Christ into the crisis and the Lord will satisfy your weary soul and and va vanish every languishing uh, uh, spirit. I'm a witness. I am a witness to this, th that the Lord will satisfy the weary soul. The Lord, come, he, he invites us, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I am a witness. I uh, thought when I wrote this book, there's a poem in here called The Big 8-0, where I turned 80 and I was feeling confident and I've been through all my trials and tribulations in life. And lo and behold, here comes the, the, the virus, which just changed everything, not only in our country, but all over the world. So uh, it was predicted. I said it couldn't happen. But I want to share you, with you a poem that I wrote a long time ago called Guess, Guess Where I Found God. Now, uh, as I said, I have relied on God to get me through a lot of uh, situations in my lifetime. And he's pulled me through. This is Guess Where I Found God. It's in my uh, new book, The Butterfly. I found God in the mountains. And in the rising sun, I found him in the sunset when the day was done. If you've ever seen the sun setting over the water or seen the sun coming up, you know that's God. I found him in the rivers and in the waterfalls and in the mighty oceans and in the trees so tall. These trees, they die each winter, but then they're born again. And that same rebirth can happen for women and for men. I found him in the churches and in the singing choir. I found him in my living room beside a quiet fire. I found him in the words that I read and in nature's mysteries. His fingerprints are everywhere if we but choose to see. I found God in beauty. I found him in love. I found him in peace and harmony and in the moon and the stars are above. The moon and the stars above. I found him in a quiet place. I even found God in suffering and sorrow. I found him in the hope that we will have a bright tomorrow. I found him in the baby's faces and in the skies so blue and in many, many people. I found him in you. And I say that I found him in you because if you are watching this show, then you are one of the people that, uh, I would find God in. You know, God put a little bit of himself into each one of us. And that little bit of, uh, I don't know whether you want to call it soul or spirit, but the little bit of himself that he, he put into each inside us to help us deal with what goes on outside of us. 
A another one of my poems from this book that I want to share is uh, called If It Is To Be. There is so much going on that we each, we, we have to grow up now. We have to be grown. We can't sit and rely on other folks to do things. So this is called If It Has To Be. And I didn't know the pandemic was coming when I wrote this. If it has to be, if it is to be, it's up to me. What I want to see is up to me. No other alternative do I see, unless you too are sick and through of all the negativity. Now we need more kindness in the world, and I am a kindness kind of girl. We need more love and comfort too, and I'll tell you just what you and me can do. To get a friend, you can be a friend, and I'll tell you just what you can lend to be a friend. At the end of your arm is a helping hand. You don't have to do much, just do what you can. Now, do you want to be a blessing instead of a pain? Do you want to bring sunshine instead of rain? When you look into the mirror and you see who do you see and you see who you do see, remember, you can tell yourself if it is to be, it's up to me. And the last poem that I want to share with you is a poem of faith. Uh, I've shared it with you before. I'm sharing it with you again. He who holds the future. When storms are raging round me and I'm drowning in quicksand and unhappy things are happening, things that I don't understand, when I don't know what else to do, I'll just do what I can. Because he who holds the future, he also holds my hand. Now, I know that God is with me every step of the way. If he brought me to it, he'll bring me through it. So in his care, I will stay. And I will face my future according to his plan. Because he who holds the future, he also holds my hand and your hand. And I said that was going to be the last poem, but I started to read a poem last week that I didn't get to finish. And it's called A Love So Pure. And it's dedicated to my son who is handicapped. A love so pure. A love so pure that I am sure it's coming straight from God. This kind of love comes down from above and right into my heart. Your smiling eyes were a big surprise that I never thought I'd see. So who knew that one day you would be smiling down at me? How could I guess that I'd be blessed for taking care of you. You've taught me a lot of things about how love can be true. I never thought the day would come when you would be teaching me, but now I'm sure that when love is pure, it's unconditionally. My son that gave me so much anxiety and so much stress and so many sleepless nights my son taught me about unconditional love. You know, we talk about unconditional love, but he shows unconditional love. He loves me no matter what my clothes cost, no matter how my hair looks, no matter how much money I got. He is a pure person, and people like my son, they have a purity in them that the rest of us might not have. They, no deceit, no guile, no scheming, no... Uh, trying to uh, uh, hurt you or get back at you or vengeance. They're just a pure person. So I am so, so uh, amazed that this person that I thought knew so little was able to teach me. He also taught me about living in the moment. He's not worried about yesterday. He's not worried about tomorrow. He lives in the moment. And that's a hard thing to do for me. But if you think about it, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Our gift is today, this moment. That's why it's called the present. My son taught me about the gift of the present. So whoever it is, they have something to offer, whoever the person is. Now my book, this is his artwork 
that uh, is coloring the butterfly. And in my uh, other book, Inspired by Autism, I'm using his artwork. I tried to show what he can do because there are so many things that he can't do. Now, if you want more information about the Purvis Foundation, you can find us on the internet at pjjraf.org. That's the Purvis Jackson Jr. Autism Foundation. You can find me on Facebook. You can also find me at, on uh by email, jacksonclaudrine at sbcglobal.net. Jacksonclaudrine, C-L-A-U-D-R-E-E-N at sbcglobal.net. Until next week, may you have more than a spoonful of comfort. Thank you so much for the privilege of your time. Sick and tired Living in a town Filled with narrow minds And hey They used to laugh at me Their children called me name I would run and hide Feeling so ashamed Just for being born I was just a boy Punished for a crime That was not mine